and I'll be presenting my research on the causes of unexplained stillbirth. I became interested in biology, reproduction, and pregnancy loss during my undergraduate studies at Yale, where I majored in the history of science, medicine, and public health. Through my pre-medical and humanities studies, I began working with my mentor, Dr. Kleiman, to study the placenta and its mechanisms that contribute to both normal and abnormal reproduction and development. The definition of stillbirth is a loss at or greater than 20 weeks gestation. And there are about 25,000 stillbirths per year at a rate of about six per 1,000 births. And of course, of course, each loss is a tragedy for mothers and families. And as Marta explained, many remain unexplained even after pathological and clinical analysis or classification. Therefore, for our research, we examined the placentas of 384 cases of previously unexplained stillbirths that had been sent to a consult service at Yale University. And through our novel classification system, we were able to determine the cause of 99% of these stillbirths. In other words, all but five cases remained unexplained. The smooth density histogram on the left illustrates the frequency of causes as a function of gestational age. This pie chart demonstrates the cause frequencies from our data. Our results determined that 33% of stillbirths had a small placenta defined as estimated placental volume less than 10th percentile. Another third had dysmorphic placental chorionic villi, which are markers of genetic abnormalities. 15% were due to cord accidents, 6% infections, 4% placental abruption, and 3% fetal bleed. With these results that one third of stillbirths were due to a small placenta, we sought to understand what caused that decreased placental size. Of the 128 cases determined to be caused by a small placenta, we found that most were driven by underlying genetic abnormalities shown on the density histogram in blue. Other cases demonstrated the pathology of decreased maternal perfusion or otherwise known as um, uteroplacental insufficiency and a handful of cases showed maternal immunologic rejection of the placenta. There were also a small number of cases that showed no coexisting pathology. But even more significantly, the placentas we examined were not just sort of small, they were extremely small. 85% measured with their estimated placental volume at less than first percentile for their respective gestational age, 43% measured less than the 0.1 percentile, and about another quarter measured less than the 0.01 percentile. So these cases of stillbirth were, had extremely small placentas. The next major cause in this case series of stillbirths were dysmorphic placental chorionic villi, which were evidenced by the presence of trophoblast inclusions or invaginations as illustrated um, on the figures to the right. These occur when the cytotrophoblast layer of the chorionic villi pathologically fold inwards rather than protrude outwards, which causes these invaginations and ultimately inclusions. Cord accidents were evidenced by cord compression or knots and fetal hypoxia, which ultimately led to the fetal demise. Infections were defined as ascending infection into the amniotic fluid and evidence of a fetal inflammatory response. Placental abruption occurs when the placenta detaches and ultimately separates from the uterine wall. Fetal bleed was found to be the cause when fetal blood was found in the maternal vagina, amniotic fluid, or maternal circulation. Our research is significant in that we introduced two major novel diagnostic categories, small placenta and dysmorphic chorionic villi, which allowed us to elucidate the causes of 99% of the most challenging diagnostic cases of stillbirth. Most importantly, this provides diagnoses and answers to women, potentially relieving some guilt after a loss and aiding in the grieving process. And the reason why we're all here today is that understanding the major causes of stillbirth is a crucial component of ultimately preventing it, and we hope to continue to work on understanding stillbirth and implementing clinical measures to prevent future losses. I want to thank my extraordinary team of Harvey Kleiman and Parker Holzer, as well as the many lost moms who have courageously shared their stories with me. Um, their resilience and advocacy inspires me and more information 
on their work to prevent stillbirth can be found at measurethaplacenta.org or at their Instagram at measurethaplacenta. Thank you.